So, welcome everybody um, to this magnificent audience. Uh, the present works uh, was done to ask the question about if knowledge as a factor, as a productivity factor in this information society is the path for overcome poverty and their correct steps toward the development. Maybe this can sound as a utopia, but it's the proposed, uh, proposal of the actions carry out uh, and explicit in the following slides. So, as an introduction, uh, these, all the activities that you will be uh, seeing is under the umbrella of a theory of the and growth endogenous models based on human capital and knowledge as a main productivity factor. And an hypothesis in uh, micro scale economics or microeconomics, if is the knowledge is introduced into a community, then positive externalities will increase the total output, uh, contributing in the long term to overcoming extreme poverty. And the test scenarios for both, uh, for these uh, theory and hypotheses, are two slums in Cartagena de Indias, Colombia, that is a touristic city. But uh, the focus right now is in Isla Leon, where we already have uh, outcomes. Uh, Isla Leon is localized in the north coast or Caribbean coast of Colombia, and 64% of his population is a victim of internal conflict displaced by violence in rural areas of the Caribbean and Pacific coast in Colombia. It's a small slum uh, of 10 hectares and have more than 10 years uh, of existence. Um, right now more than 300 dwellings and close to 1,800 people living there. This is a uh, different types of dwellings that they have. Um, they already, uh, at the beginning, they started with houses like this at the right corner, uh, and the other are evolution of the dwellings. Uh, and the, the pink one uses stilts, so these uh, dwellings are more prepared for floods that are common in this in this, in this area because they are surrounded by canals as you can see later. And the facts of this uh, community is that they are making a call and they have an inner leadership. So they want to know, in the past, they want to know how many houses they have. Uh, they decide to put names on to the streets. They want to show to the city and to the world that they already exist. And by the leadership passes, they are looking for external cooperation to transform the territory, not just assistance, and have a, a strong commitment with the achievement of the project. And I came um, in, to this project invited by MAP Cartagena, it's a pilot project of the NGO, and thanks to Natalia Arruda, that was the leader of this uh, pilot project. And my role was about the mapping process. This mapping process uh, starts with step zero, is the community involvement or uh, establishing previous relationships with the communities, with the children, with the uh, adolescents or adults, and explain about the projects and the benefits that will they receive. After that, well, the first step is uh, with a mapping party, um, mapping the past just knowing how was the, the, the slum, in, in this case, 2012, using a big imagery. Then uh, we map the present, uh, using, in this case, uh, term aerial imagery. We tried with balloons too, but it was not successful. And I, I can, if anybody wants to know the reason why, uh, I can tell. But uh, we just map the present and share with the community uh, the whole process and the results into the same houses um, in, in present life. 
At the final, we received this uh, ortho photomosaic TMS ready for uh, use it in the tasking manager, and then conduct or do a second mapping party. So at the end of the mapping party, we have uh, actual data of uh, April 2015. And then we go to the ground, to the ground crew for data validation and sharing with the community with are the main uh, uh, geographical elements to collect and the name of the streets, of course, but the poles, electricity poles and water points and other in important information for them. And this is an example of field papers. Uh, that is always a good uh, practice um, and give you the possibility to gather and reach data with the community inhabitants. Later, well, we just have uh, updated data in 2015 and proceed with the sports for several tools like you already know and then sharing all this data through data hubs like HDX. Um, but at this point, we can create these uh, products, as I can say, for cadastro data. First one is uh, see the evolution of the construction or construction dynamics of the slum. At the beginning, using the data from 2012 of B, there are uh, 143 houses. Uh, then, with the drone, we found 258 and then in a recent uh, disaster or event that they have we collected uh, new data in July of 2016 and have 303 uh, dwellings so as you can see uh, how is the evolution and they are um, only constructing houses they don't have a urban plan for common spaces or things like that. And we can then calculate the rate of how many homes or dwellings are constructed by month. And these are three houses per month. Uh, this other map shows how the uh, slum is uh, ready to resist uh, floods because the 70% of the houses uh, are already over steels. So when the floods come, uh, they don't suffer as, as like the others. And with this uh, first step, that I consider that is the first step, uh, collecting geographical data, and then you go to collect population data, because uh, the maps serve as, uh, for planning and deployment of the household survey. And in this case, we divide uh, the slum in four areas with uh, equal uh, numbers of houses in each area. Uh, there is a sample of 125 for 250 houses. So after that, we um, tabulate the data and make it joins this with the spatial uh, data, that is OSM, with the population data coming from the household survey that is around 200 variables that give us the opportunity to create thematic maps and indicators like this one. This uh, shows the overcrowding and, and you can see well is the colors maybe of the extreme poverty because these uh, numbers at the right show you how many people sleep in only one room. So you can see from the yellow of 2.5 to 8, so until 8 persons sleep in one room. So you can see how it's the situation in this, into these homes. And, and indicators like this, 10 meters per person in each home, or per perceptions about highway quality um, from good, regular, bad, or appealing. Uh, you can see the picture, the style of the, of the streets. There are areas that are linked, linked to insecurity perceptions and evictions attempts in the last year. So, but 
after all these works, uh, there are still things to do in this community. And one is we only give back to them, to the map. We, we are already not uh, giving to them the information of population data or other one like disaster for disaster reduction, like digital elevation models. And we need to continue with this project uh, to uh, design programs and project with the community as a sustainable process and then create community of practice uh, as a knowledge tool for uh, create pertinent uh, knowledge to the slum realities. But only with the map there are uh, benefits, already two benefits uh, for this community. The first one, first one is the, the what they are looking for uh, is to be uh, to tell the world that they exist and the slum formalization because using the map they can uh, go to the uh, city planning office to start the process and and then finally end this process with uh, democratic elections uh, and this uh, give uh, the title of a formal neighborhood so the map was a base or an instrument or a tool for starting uh, to be became in a formal neighborhood and being a formal neighborhood they will uh, access give a, have, has access uh, into the law into the Colombian law to resources public resources I mean for his internal initiative or for public services like water and etc. So it's very important to get formal. And the second one is disaster event visibility because this was the last uh, 14th of July there was a uh, humanitarian assistance negation. I mean Red Cross and fire, fire bomb bombers, fire bombers are, uh, don't want to attend this community because the government say that there are irregular neighborhoods but this uh, is a clear violation of the law, uh, 1523 from Colombia. But using the map and the pictures, we attract the media coverage. And this raised the public attention. Then this community, after all, received the humanitarian response. This is live on TV, uh, the leader of the neighborhood. Uh, Tell, tell him to the uh, in a national channel, Caracol TV, about their, his problems. Um, and this one is an article in a local newspaper uh, that the title says, oh, we are not invisible. And here is the open street map. So uh, these are the two benefits that already the community receives only with the map. As a conclusion from the same community, from the community, is that it's important to have a map as a base to guide us. Uh, my conclusion is that the maps as a form of knowledge uh, is the starting point for a slum formalization. And the maps empowers the community to act in its own benefits and not all the community are ready for the maps. Uh, the community needs an internal leadership and needs uh, a common vision, faith, perseverance and teamwork is required uh, to obtain the benefits from the map. But not all the community has this. So maybe plus as a map, uh, as a starting point, the other starting point is try, trying to, to rise this uh, conscientious into the communities uh, through these uh, internal leaders. So, thank you very much uh, to all the institutions involved in this uh, as a hot market uh, in a pilot project. Carmeli, that was the filming company uh, that gave us the opportunity to use the drone, and these universities that uh, serve as uh, mapping party hostels. Open Stigma France uh, for the Porto Mosaic and Imairi host, and you mappers, your center said and said uh, to help me to be present.